Hey guys, what's up? So, you want a sword, huh? Well, those of you out there who want swords and haven't gotten them before and are trying to find ways of getting one, well, I'm going to come up with some stuff that will make choosing one easier. Well, specifically for the katana guys. Um, while what I'm saying is going to be focused on katana guys, because it seems that those guys seem to have the most questions in a, you know, when it comes down to what type of sword to get, um, some of what I'm saying can also pertain to, um, you know, Western martial artists as well. Though, um, you'll see why in a bit as I'm explaining why some of this stuff won't really, um, you know, pertain to them, but whatever. Usually when, um, a lot of guys who want to get a katana for the first time, and again, this could also, swords, period. You know, this is, I'll say that this part can be a bit more general. Usually when people are trying to get a sword, um, there's so much information out there and so much to choose from that, you know, you can easily get confused on what type of blade to get or what's considered a good sword or not. And even if you decide to do something like research online or go on YouTube to find out, and you will get some information that can help you out. It seems the more answers you get, the more confusing it gets. Because like, first, you, you know, you hear that, for instance, you need high carbon steel. Okay, cool. But then you find out there's more than one type of high carbon steel. So which one's better than the next one? Oh, and this sword can cut through a steel drum and this one can't. And does that mean that this sword sucks? And this, what, blade geometry? What the fuck? Real hormone? Huh? But it, you know, it can throw you out of whack. And, and this is not even talking about like point of balance or, you know, distal tapering and all that other stuff. So what I'm going to do with this video is try my best to narrow things down to just a few small categories so that it'll be easy for you to pick out a sword for the first time. And again, this is for first timers. Someone who's already collected a couple, already, you know, knows a bit about swords, will find just about everything that I'm saying, like they already know it. Or, well, maybe they might learn something new, but for the most part, they already know it. And they can go into more, you know, they can handle more complicated details. Like, you know, the blade geometry and whether uh, what the tip is shaped like and whether it's, you know, what type of metal is used for the fittings and all that type of stuff. That's later. In the beginning, when you just simply want to get a sword, you, you just want a sword. So this will help you out. Now, this is also catered to the people who want a functional sword. Because if somebody just simply wants a sword for decoration, pick anything. I mean, well, granted, you, you want something that's still worth the money. You know, you, you don't want to get something that's a complete piece of shit, even if it's just a decoration. But um, by and large, you know, if you're just hanging it on the wall, it doesn't matter all that much, you know, the blade type and how it's constructed and all that. I mean, you don't want to just make sure what you're getting doesn't look like crap and just put it up on your wall or in your mantelpiece or whatever you're doing for decoration and you're fine. You know, just don't swing it around or try to cut with it because it's just not built for that. And it's not just the steel, by the way, which makes a sword good for cutting, which I'll get into in a moment. It's also how well it's constructed, you know, because you could have a really good blade, but if it's put on really poor fittings and a bad handle, you're still going to have problems. Ultimately, when somebody's getting a sword for the first time, you have to ask yourself, well, do you want a sword that matches your high level of fighting ability? Or do you want a sword to practice with? And while there is some overlap with that, this is what I mean. Many times when somebody's trying to get a sword for the first time, they don't necessarily have an, I would even say not even an intermediate level of skill. Many times people just want to get a sword just for fun, just for kicks. They got no training in sword work. You know, they don't know how to even do basic cutting, which is not really all that hard to do, to be honest. Um, it's only like, you know, refining your cutting technique that things can get hard. The devil's in the details, but, um, many times it's just somebody who just wants a cool sword. I'm looking for a, a sword that can cut so I can, you know, every now and then pull it out in my backyard and cut up some bottles. Okay. Nothing really wrong with that. Or you'll have a student of, let's say, Kenjutsu who wants to find, like, they've been practicing Aido for a while. Maybe it's not, it's, uh, some Japanese martial art, whether it's Kenjutsu or Aido or Aijutsu. They've been practicing with um, I, um, with Aito, you know, like the blunt aluminum swords, or maybe they were lucky enough to get a steel one. But now they want a live blade, and they're looking for something for the first time, and they don't know what to do. Well, those guys, beginner guys, 
you know, the guys who, you know, they're learning how to cut or they're not necessarily all about trying to refine their trained technique. They're just trying to just cut some shit up in the backyard. Through hardened swords are probably the best for you. I've just gotten rid of a whole lot of different categories of sword right there. I've just made things extremely easy for you. Get a sword that's through hardened, or they also call it mono hardened. And the reason why this is is several is one, a katana that's through hardened tends to cost a lot less than one that is differentially hardened. And I'll be getting into the differences in the two in a moment. Because they're cheaper, it'll be easier for you to get. And for a first timer, first timer usually is not. I've rarely bumped to a first-timer who has thousands of dollars to spend on a sword. They got like maybe 300, 500 max. You can pick up a through-hardened katana for around 250 bucks, 300 bucks tops, you know. Sometimes they go up a little bit higher, but usually I usually see it around that range. And they're well-made for what they are. Differentially hardened swords can also hover around that price range. But those swords, I personally believe, are not necessarily for the beginner. They're for somebody who already knows what they're doing. And now for those of you who wonder, what does the hard thing have to do with that? Let me explain. In general, when making a sword, and again, I'm saying in general, there's two types of ways of tempering a sword. There's through hardening, also known as mono hardening, and differential hardening. Now, this, by the way, is one of the reasons why I say this is more for the katana guys, because if you are a Western martial artist, well, most of your swords are through hardened. I've yet to bump into, say, a long sword that's been differentially hardened. There's no reason for it. Through hardening is, you know what? I'm just going to come out there right now and say it. Through hardening, for all intents and purposes, is probably the best way to temper a sword, in my personal opinion, if you want a good balance between durability, resiliency, shock, you know, sharp absorbency in the blade, and a decent cutting edge. Through hardened swords are great to have a balance with all of that. That's why the Europeans did that for hundreds of years. It's, <laughs> people keep talking about the refinement process of making Japanese swords, and this is not taking away from how they're constructed, but the Japanese had to come up with such a, you know, a process because they didn't have good ores to work with. They just did not have a vast amount of resources, metal resources, that the Europeans did. The Europeans had great resources for steel. And when you already have something working for you, you don't need to come up with a complicated process to make the material work. So then you'll just simply come up with a, um, uh, a process of tempering that works pretty damn well for the ores you got. And through hardening does that. When you throw hard, through hardened swords are pretty resilient, especially with the type of steel that's used, which I'll get into that later. Um, you use the right steel when you throw harden the sword, it ends up having a decent amount of flex, but still really good and stiff for thrusting. Um, they're very resilient, very durable, and those people who really know what they're doing can make swords that can take a lot of abuse. Notice I said abuse. If you know what you're doing with a sword, you don't really have to worry about durability all that much. I know a lot of people are hung up on durability. If you know what you're doing, I mean, I'm not saying you should get a sword that isn't durable, but there are people out there, I want my sword to be the, the most durable around. You're kind of focusing a little too much on a category, that, on, on a characteristic that probably shouldn't be your focus. The, when you see those videos where they test out swords, where they're banging on steel drums or cutting down branches from live trees and shit like that, or like when you see, like, for instance, Scholar Grimm has some great, destructive test videos on, on testing durability, like his recent um, Dyphos test video. It's freaking awesome. Wow. Now I really want that sword. Um, those are destructive tests. Those are not the sort of things you're actually supposed to be doing with a sword. Okay? Swords were made to kill people. People are not... Listen, this is just the truth. I'm not saying that you should be running around and killing people with a sword, but that's what the swords were originally made for. People are not made out of stone or dead wood or bits of metal, okay? Swords are meant to go through softer targets. And as long as the cutting practice that you're doing is through softer targets, your sword should be fine, considering it's well-constructed. Durability doesn't, like maximum durability, no longer really becomes an issue with standard use. It only, we only have to start worrying about, it's the toughest around when you're doing shit with your sword that you're not supposed to. Anyway, I'm getting a little bit of mark here. We're talking about through hardening. There are such things as through hardened katana. 
and through hard and katana are great for beginners or people who just every now and then want to knock about in their backyard because many times beginners and especially people who are just knocking about don't have a refined technique yet when it comes to cutting through objects and believe it or not even cutting through softer targets can sometimes fuck up your sword if you don't know what you're doing you may have heard the term taking a set and this is by the way um the trade-off with differential hardening which i'll go into later i promise many times if you take a katana that has been forged in the traditional manner it's folded maybe even laminated differentially hardened and all that and you have a beginner try to cut through a tatami mat or something and the edge isn't lined right or they hit it wrong or whatever, there's a lot of shock that goes through the blade because of it. There is minimum shock with a good cut. With a bad cut, you can see it. Like, you'll see the blade vibrating and stuff. And with a differentially hardened blade that's been folded and laminated, sometimes not even, it doesn't even have to be all that. I've seen this with just plain old differentially hardened swords. The sword's going to take a set. It's going to bend and not snap back. It's just... This does not mean your sword sucks. This just happens to be one of the things that happens with traditional Japanese swords. They will do that. In fact, some of you may laugh, but in like traditional Japanese tamashigiri contests, like when they have many different people showing off their cutting ability, many times they'll have a guy on the side whose job is there to bend the swords back into shape (laughs) if it happens to take a bad cut or if it hits wrong or whatever and it's like oh shit my thousand year old sword don't worry we got the guy here who can fix it now if you're a beginner do you really want to be messing around with that probably not you just want to cut you don't want to mess with damn it's back i'm gonna bend it back is it straight i don't know you don't want to deal with that thus the through hardened katana and those things take shocks better they aren't known for taking a set, especially if it's made out of spring steel. Um, they usually they can bend it and snap right back. Um, so that means they're very resilient, durable, and you know they can handle the shock pretty well. So if you're somebody who's constantly cutting, because you're, you're training hard to get your technique right, through hard is great. If you're just somebody every now and then, I just feel like cutting some shit up, and you just got the basics of cutting down, but your, your technique isn't refined, through hardening, it's great. You don't got to worry about, you know, the bending problems that could happen. But here's the catch. Through hardened katana are not as sharp as differentially hardened katana. Because when you through harden the sword, it's all about getting that resiliency. But when you make something resilient, well, that means that it's somewhat pliable, isn't it? It's a bit softer. In order to get a really sharp edge, the metal has to be hard. But as we know, at least people who are researching swords and people who already know about swords already know that in sword making, there's always that trade off. The harder a sword is, the more brittle it is. The softer it is, yeah, the more resilient it is, but you're going to have a hard time getting a good sharp, sharp edge on there or at least keeping that sharp edge for a decent period of time. And that's the capture through hardened swords which is why they're sharp. Don't get me wrong. You don't want to get hit with one of these things. They will still take off a limb. But they're not as sharp as a differentially hardened katana, which is why I say that a differentially hardened one is good for someone who already has a decent level of skill. They got the basics down pat. They know how to cut. They can cut without causing a problem. They can cut without that shock. They can keep their edge aligned. They know the right amount of speed and power to you know, do the proper cut. Now they can pick up a more finely honed instrument to further refine their technique. Because now that you're using a sword, if you switch over to a differentially hardened one with a harder, sharper edge, a more refined, finer edge, now you can do those cuts where, you know, you're cutting through the tatami mat and it's that nice, I'm pretty sure you guys have seen it, those nice, quick, clean cuts where... The shock of the blow doesn't go through the whole target. You just it'll just go through, and is a split second before the piece finally falls. That's done by someone who really knows what they're doing with a finely honed instrument. A beginner's not really at that level yet. Somebody who's just doing backyard cutting, they're usually not at that level yet. They need it, uh, but someone who is at that level would want an instrument 
that, you know, caters to their level of technique. That's what a differentially hardened katana is generally for. So I hope that right there automatically helps people to immediately pick out what sword would be good for them according to their needs. A beginner or somebody just knocking about, a through hardened katana will be great for them as a first time sword. It will be cost less. It will have less maintenance in terms of having to worry about it bending and all that. I mean, it's still high carbon steel, so you better still, you know, maintain it and clean it, oil it and all that stuff. But you don't got to worry about that. Whereas somebody who has a, a higher level of skill, differential is great. And you can still find a good differential katana for around 300 bucks, 400. I've seen some really good differential katana under 500, like really well made around that price. Now, however, there are some people who want to get a first time sword not necessarily for cutting and all that, or maybe they just want to do some quick backyard cutting, whatever, but aesthetics appeal to them. And in that case, if aesthetics is a bit more important for you, um, to you, then maybe you probably don't want to get a through hardened because this is where the whole thing about a real hormone comes in. This has been said, stated to death, so I'm not going to linger on this too much, but for those of you who have no freaking clue what a hormone is or what that has to do with the tempering process, um, take a sword like, say, this katana, which is differentially hard. Um, the lighting in here isn't that good, so I hope you're going to be able to get a chance of seeing it. And don't mind the weird oil specks on here. Um, this is not doing a really good job. I'm trying to get you guys to see the temper line, which is what a homone is. Okay, you can sort of see it there, right? Along the edge, close to the edge. See that wavy line? You see it? You should see, like, a, a, a line that's just just under the um, that's just under the katana, the edge of the katana. I got a little bit of a oil rag here. I'm trying this again. I hope you can see it a bit easier now. This camera's not picking it up. Sorry, guys. Lack of editing at work. Hopefully, you can see it. I can see it on my screen, but just barely. I don't know how it's going to turn out on yours, and the reflection's not helping, and plus the glow of my keyboard's not helping. Um, maybe if I turn it this way. Okay, damn it. You guys know what I'm talking about. On the freaking katana, there's that wavy line. Everybody knows the whole freaking wavy line that's on there. On a differentially hardened sword, that wavy line is known as a real hormone. Because when you're doing the whole differential process, and you, you know, you're doing the whole clay thing on, on there, and you... Differentially hardening, un unlike temporal hardening or through hardening, is where the edge of the blade hardens at a different pace than the spine of it, which is how you get that edge part to be harder than the rest of the body, differential hardening. It's because different, different parts are, you know, tempering at different speeds. So you get a temporal line right, you know, right below the edge. So you can see where the hard part of the steel is and the part that's behind that um, temper line toward the spine, that's the softer part. That's actual activity in the steel itself. If you actually decided to break a katana or any sort, or dien for that matter, because there are dien that are differentially hardened as well. If you happen to break one of those things and look at the broken part, you will still see that line in the steel because it's, an act, it's, you, it's the steel itself has been altered, it's been changed, there's activity there. That line you see is where the change happens. And people who are, who collect katana love seeing that because all lines are different. Each sword has a different wavy line depending on the guy who made it, um, you know, the, depending on like what art, like some people like they, they do a whole art thing on there. Like this one's gonna have like jagged edges, this one's gonna be a little bit straighter, this one's gonna be subtle. I want this one to be like waves, whatever. Like they, they, everybody's, you know, certain, you know, craftsmen including the forges over in China. Every now and then they want to put their own little finishing touch on the edge. And a lot of people find value in that. A through hardened katana, however, will not have that line. Because they don't do that process where they put the, you know, clay and all that. You just bang it out, put it in the shape, dunk the thing. Um, I'm, I'm grossly, you know, simplifying things here. But it's, yeah, the process that they do for differentially hardening with it, you know, put the clay there to make, the edge is different. No, it's the same type of steel throughout. The edge is not harder than the back part of the sword. It's all one same 
density throughout the blade. So because of that, there's no activity in the steel that will cause that difference in, you know, from one part of the blade to the other. There's no line. But there's plenty of through hardened katana out there that don't have a line on there. Those are fake. Those are etched on the blade. And a lot of people hate that, <laughs> especially if they're trying to get a katana for the first time. They hate that shit. I can understand why, you know, it's, when, if you're just simply looking at your sword for just straight up use, you're just getting something for a utilitarian use. Okay, so it's got a fake kimono on there. Big freaking deal. But a lot of people pick up katana because of what it represents or because, you know, it, it's a sword that's been elevated to a higher level than just a straight up tool. So people want to see the things that make a katana a katana. So they want to see that activity in the steel. They want to see that hormone. They want it to be unique. Um, and this is also another, uh, also another reason why people want their katanas to be folded, even though there is no reason today for modern swords to be folded. None whatsoever. But they want to see that those fold lines in there because, well, that's what a katana is. A katana is supposed to be folded. It's supposed to be differentially hardened. And it would be nice to see some lamination, too. They want to see that. They want to see that high level of craftsmanship that tend to be seen in katana or at least the katana that are shown as examples. It's funny how many, you know, if you just look at what I would call an average katana, all these things that people want to see in there, not a lot of them are in there, but whatever. Um, so they don't want to see a fake hormone. And it's pretty easy, by the way, to tell a fake hormone from a real one. It's not all that hard. For one thing, um, fake hormone, most people, when they put a fake hormone on there, they make it way too uniform you can tell it was something that was just like like they, they put some type of I don't know some stencil or something on there and just put that right on the blade you can tell the, the, that wavy like anytime you happen to see like uh what I would call a decorative sword wall hangers and you see that standard wavy line it's just perfectly symmetrical no one bumps higher than the other that's fake that's been etched on um, another way you can tell is, um, simply by the way the blade looks in the light. And also, a real homon, the line itself is not really solid. It looks solid from a distance, but when you really look at the steel, you see it's actually, like, it's made of a whole lot of little dots, for lack of a better term. Like, it's, it's hazy. It's not a solid line. It's kind of hazy or cloudy or foggy. That's another way to tell. And of course, the most extreme way to tell is just break the damn sword. You know, just look at the broken piece and then you see if, the, if you see a little bit of white in there, where the line is, then you know. But I wouldn't recommend you doing that. Again, some people, that's not a problem. If you're a beginner and you're just simply trying to cut with it, yeah, that shouldn't be, who cares that it's got a line. In fact, there's a company out there called Ronin who specifically make through hardened swords straight up for be, um, beginning cutters and people who are just doing heavy cutting practicing they don't put a fake come on on there at all because they are just all about like listen these are just straight up cutters all right this is for practicing this isn't an art sword this isn't a you know we're not trying to fake anything this is a sword that was designed for heavy cutting use in your dojo so you can get good at cutting shit and you and even if you're good at cutting shit and you're planning on doing a whole lot of heavy cutting action um this sword will make it so that you're really good you know whatever artsy sword you happen to have in the back of your uh, finely honed katana, you don't got to risk that one. Just use this beater and beat with it. Cut with it, I should say. Um, which, and they have, a, from what I hear, they make really good swords too, so whatever. Um, but this has gone on long enough, and I think I've rambled a bit too much, but I hope that this has helped some people figure out exactly what type of sword is for them. Um, beginners or people just knocking about in the backyard, you don't need all the fluff. You don't need, you know, to get a sword that is put together by a master smith with all these extra folding lines and got the real home. You just need a sword that's going to withstand the rigors of basic cutting. It doesn't need to have a whole lot of frills. It doesn't need to have, like, you know, jewel encrusted handles or any of that type of stuff. I don't think I've bumped into a jewel encrusted katana. That would be interesting. Um, through Harden will work for you. It'll also work for you if you're not somebody who's planning on, you know, honing your technique. You just want to cut shit up. Get it through hard. However, 
For those of you who care about aesthetics, then yeah, you probably want a differentially hardened katana. But if you're the type of person who is, I, I want to put on this last caveat. If you are somebody who is, again, you're just knocking about in the backyard, or you have an intermediate level of skill and you want a differential hardened one, or if you just knock around in your backyard but you'd rather have a katana with a real hormone, okay, get yourself a production katana that has a real hormone in there. You'll be probably paying a little bit more, but not all that much. Like something like the Chines Kaze, that's a differentially hardened katana, and it's still pretty damn resilient. A lot of people love that katana for good reason. It's got a real hormone on there, and it cuts pretty damn well, and it's while it's not as resilient as some of the company's other through hardened katana, it's still pretty damn good as a differentially hardened one. Those will work, and it's under three hundred dollars. So again, a good first time investment. Don't worry about folding. That's for people who have extra money who want to spend the extra money on aesthetics. A modern sword has no reason. I need to stress this. A modern sword has no reason to be folded. The folding process is there to get impurities out of the steel. That is it. It has nothing to do with durability. It is not the folding that makes the sword tough, especially today. In fact, today, with our pure steels, if you try to fold that thing too many freaking times, you're going to end up with a lump of iron. That can't have an, a decent edge at all because you would have hammered out all the freaking carbon. Yeah, look it up. You don't need it to be folded. The only reason why we have, you know, folded swords is because of the nice, beautiful pattern, the water lines that you see in the sword, the so-called Damascus steel, all that type of stuff. That's there for aesthetics. It's there because it makes the blade look beautiful. Nothing to do with durability. Okay, you want a durable sword, it has to be heat treated properly. And a through hardened sword that's done by someone who knows what the hell they're doing. Um, yeah, it is just as durable, if not more so, than an older sword that's been differentially hardened and laminated and folded and all that. Believe it or not. So I hope that's helped. Um, for the uh, European guys, again, most of your swords are through hardened anyway. And especially if you if it's being made by a company that knows what the hell they're doing, you don't got to worry. The only advice I have for you guys, if you're getting a long sword for the first time, get something that's no frills. And get something that does not go over three freaking pounds. Um... There are people out there who um, they'll see a sword that looks great or, you know, it's, it's, it looks so beautiful. And then I look at it and it's supposed to be a one handed sword. And it's like close to four pounds. I'm like, no, especially if you're learning how to use a sword for the first time. Swinging around a sharpened crowbar is not going to help. You want. In fact, I'll even say this to Katana guys. You want you, anybody really. I'm, this is my general rule for getting a sword. If it is over three pounds and it is not two handed, stay the hell away. And if you want something that you're actually going to be able to be close to the originals and something that's going to help your technique, try not to go over three pounds, even if it's two-handed, unless it happens to be some giant knockoff sword, like a, um, I don't know, a Zwayander or something. But a katana, really, there's no reason for it to be bigger, than, um, heavier than two pounds, 11 ounces. In my, I really don't think that should be that long. Even long swords, I've seen some great balanced long swords around two pounds eight ounces two pounds six ounces two-handed but they get the job done you don't need them to be that heavy especially for a first-time sword that you're learning to use don't stay away from swords that like maybe you can get away with a three pound sword if it's a two-hander like i'm not saying three but, but once you start reaching around three and a half four there's something wrong especially for a katana katana should not weigh three pounds sorry no not unless it happens to have like a 33 inch blade or something. And even then you better hope it has a good point of balance, like maybe around five inches away from the, the handguard or something. Anyway, yeah, I hope that helps to narrow down categories for people. Um, this is already now a half an hour. I really apologize for that. I didn't expect this to be this long, but I hope that helps you guys. I am now going to look at my past record. I got so many Dark Souls 2 recorded videos that I need to get the hell up. Oh, one more thing. One more thing. I don't care how broke you are. Stay the hell away from the Bud K category, um, catalogs. Stay the fuck away from... There's nothing in there you need if you're looking for a functional sword to cut with. I don't care what they got. I don't care how much they say, but it's high carbon steel. Stay the fuck away from the Bud K um, catalog. There is nothing good for you there. Seriously.
Anything you see that I don't care, but it's $150. You can go online and find a $150 sword made by another company that's going to do better than what you see in that catalog. Stay away from that catalog. Just trust me. There is no sword in there that you want if you want a functional sword to cut with and to learn how to cut with. Seriously. You will save yourself a whole lot of grief if you stay away from that catalog. All right. That's it. Catch you guys later.